Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's your boy Smitty. Um, welcome back. I think I just said that. Any, anyway, um, hey, we are getting real close on L to the W here. Um, last video, we got our 2.4 servo pin measured and got it shortened and installed and checked the operation and all that was good. So, um, we're down to the last, very, very last piece, and that's doing the valve body. Uh, well, it's got one little case modification I'll show you here real quick, but that being, being that, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, make sure if you like what you see, hit that like button, or if you could hit the like button for me anyway, it'd be greatly appreciated. It helps, uh, YouTube spread my videos out, so, um... Also, there's a subscribe button down there, too. Um, make sure to smash that. And the uh, little bell right beside it, make sure to turn on all notifications. That's way you get uh, notified when I upload a video. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started with that. Oh, hey, I got something real quick I want you to mention, and, and I, or I want to mention that is going around, and... It's something very important. Um, it's the RPM Act. And uh, if you all haven't heard of it, it's, it's where EPA is trying to shut down motorsports, basically. Um, taking away, you know, rights to modify a street car to make it a race car. Um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch more information on it, but... We need to stress that they need to leave our hot rods alone, that's for sure. Um, I'll put a link down in the description to it. Uh, check it out, sign it in your state if you would, and pass it on so maybe we can, you know, say, hey, look, don't mess with our hot rods. I mean, it's big for the motorsports industry. Uh, you know, if you think about how bad of a trickle effect this would have if it would, you know, pass. You know, we're being a world of hurt. You know, we wouldn't be able to do any of this hot rodding anymore, which, what fun is that? But, uh, anyway, there's far worse things that the EPA needs to control versus us. We're just, we're a very small part of this whole picture. So, anyway, like I said, there's a description down below. It's uh, uh, SEMA, it's like SEMA.RPM, or slash RPM. Anyway, I'll put a link down there for you to, to check it out. So, anyway, on with that. We're done with that. Let's get on with the video. So, hang tight. Okay, so here's three of the Sonics pieces that we're going to use. Okay. This one is our TV plunger. You can see it through the foam there. Um, this one goes on your cable, which we'll do later. And then this piece here goes in the case. But right now we're going to check, they want you to check the TV valve right here. Um, they can't stress enough that they be in Sonics, that if this valve is worn out, that you can see down in there, maybe, this, this valve right here, and if you can see me get behind it here, I'll move it. See it move in there? They say if it leaks, when you put air to it, if it leaks into this passage here, which they want you to do a wet oil test, if it leaks and blows bubbles in there, then that valve is is bad, and uh, that will burn up a band and the three four clutches. So they tell you to test this thing. I'll put you on this other tripod, see if that'll work a little better. Skeeters are out already, y'all. My goodness. You're not wanting to leave me alone. We're going to zoom you in right there. Well, not all the way. Because you need to see what my hands are doing. Alright. So, 
Let's fill up this passage with some oil. I don't know if I can get anything out of this or not. you to put air in this hole right here and if you see bubbles here when you press this you got to cover this this passage with your thumb press the plunger with your deal with your index finger and if you see bubbles in there then that TV bores wore out yep see the bubbles So that's an important piece right there. So we're going to have to order uh, the reamer and an oversized valve so we can make sure that's right. It's got to be right. That's something I can't, you can't skimp on that part. You know, the 4L60s, you can take a lot of that up with, with uh, you know, just programming, but that's not going to work. So we also need to look at the, uh, this accumulator. Mm, excuse me, goodness which is this one right here. All right. So let's slide this roll pin out. And we'll see if we can get that valve out of there. Kind of like surgery. Okay. Got a piece of crud in it, I can tell you that. dude was sticky okay I'm supposed to look down in this thing to look for wear I mean the whole thing looks kind of rough to me well, let's get some pretty good wear on it a purple spring Guess that could be pink. Now, I think this is one that we need to replace. That's kind of one of them deals, if you question it, you just ought to replace it. Get this TV valve out of here. All right, guys and gals. So, in the last video, the well, last part of this video, it's been a couple of days, obviously, we checked out these valves and this valve here is is scored pretty pretty bad this one's got a lot of wear in it and then we found out when we did the wet air test that we got bubbles coming up in this passage right here so the valve bodies wore out all right so you can get the oversized valve for it it's about 45 bucks from sonics um but you have to get a reamer kit to, to enlarge it to accept the newer, new larger valve. Well, the reamer kit's $320, something like that. Crazy stupid expensive. So, here's where the next best thing comes in. There you go. For a mere, 
about uh, it varies in price. You can get them uh, all the way down to like seventy-five dollars, up to like one hundred and forty-nine dollars, something like that. You can get a completely remanned um, valve body to fit one of these old cars, one of these old seven hundreds, for a fraction of the cost that it would cost to buy both the valve and the reamer kit for the valve body. So that's like a win-win-win. So we're still going to check to make sure because I don't know. I went ahead and picked up the accumulator valve for the 700. Uh, now this is the one for uh, like heavier cars with a with a taller gear in it. Um, like 273, 308, 323 or something like that. They make another one of these zip valves uh, for um, lighter, in other words, like 342s, 373, 410s. The valve is different on that. So make sure you get it for the right application. I'm kind of guessing that what L to the W has got in his Project Z28. He said he's got the G92 axle option, um, which could either be, which they call it a performance axle, which more than likely it's either a 308 or a 323. It won't be a uh, 273. And then, of course, the other pieces of the Sonics kit that we'll still put in, which that's the valve that goes in the case. And then that's your for your TV cable. And we're going to go ahead and check. This is the plunger. I don't know if this is the same plunger that they put in it or if they just reman these valve bodies completely stock. Um, but we'll pull this out and make sure. So let's get into this box. Smash my tub of trans lube. Damn it. Says the rebuilds feature genuine Sonex parts backed by a limited lifetime warranty. So, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. You've seen me use these on another on another build, so shouldn't be a, a whole lot different for you. The only difference is this one's quite a bit heavier. Get out of there. Big old Ziploc baggie. Well, if it's got genuine Sonex parts in it, we shouldn't have to do squat to it. Wow. 
Wow, boy, that TV valve is super smooth. That's crazy how smooth that is. All right, this one here is the one that we want to look at. To see, make sure you're in, in view here. Um, had a pair of needle nose somewhere. Don't know what the hay I did with it. We get done with the L to the W's transmission here. We got some major improvements coming to the shop, and I can't wait. Get a, it's not a all the way through uh, roll pin. I'm gently trying to walk this valve out of here. Because it is snug, which is fine. <laughs> that looks good. I think what we're most worried about is what springs in there. So let's tilt it up here. Looks to have a pink spring in it. All right. Now, according to the chart here on Sonics, pink is for heavy cars and trucks, 308, 323, 342 gear, and the pink is a firm shift. Well, I'd say being as this is a Camaro, um, I would prefer it to be a firm shift. All this stuff is changeable once it's in the car. I mean, I can always drop the, the uh, I can always drop the valve body. And change it out. But this valve is, this is a stock valve, is what this is. Because the Sonics one looks nothing like it. I know you can't see through the plastic. See, it's got... This one's got slots in it where the original one, the original one's got slots where these have got just holes. So the valves are going to act different in this one. And this is, this has already got a valve in it. So we're going to use the Sonics valve.
Well, how about you all, but that uh, white spring looks just about like this one that's right next to it. But I guess that one's supposed to be a pink one. Then that's a yellow, so if you just look at the coil bind, you can tell, or the coil windings, you can tell which one's going to give you the firmer shift. And this one here, you got them up too far. This one here is going to give you the the firmer shift this one here that would be your medium and that would be your light so man I'm torn which way to go on this I think we're going to put the medium one in there Yeah, but this one here, holy cow, that original one is super light. So, even the yellow spring is stouter than the, the factory one is. So, okay, we're going to put the, we're going to put the white one in there. And like I said, if he's not happy with it, we can always fix it. That's, I'm after to make sure that whoever I'm building one of these for is, is completely happy with my build. I am not the fastest guy in the world when it comes to doing this because I want to make sure it's right. So, alright, so we need to put this one in there. The spring goes in this end here. It'll sit in there like that. Because this side's the side that gets your your uh, roll pin goes in there slide your roll pin back in there There we go. All right. Make sure that snap ring's all the way down in there. Or snap ring. Roll pin. Okay, so there's that one. So let's go ahead and since that one was different, let's look at this TV valve. There should be a roll pin on this other side right here. dudes out all right let's look to see what the sonics one looks like just pulled out and there's the Sonics one and it the, it also looks different so we're gonna use it also so we'll take this spring out let's 
slide that dude in there gently. And give her a little bit of lube there. So the we get that in there. All right, so that should be all we have to do to this, uh, other than swap over the uh, oh, this what am I thinking of? The little spring lever that goes there. So that's going to be it on the valve body. Didn't have to do much to that, so it's ready to go. Man, I can't believe how smooth that is, though. Compared to the old one, holy shnikes, that's smooth. Alright, so, for the time being, we're going to put this dude back in its bag. Keep any uh, debris out of it. This thing don't want to go back in there. I know it came out of there. There we go. keep all this together we need to put the springs back in it um, I'm not gonna put the valves back in it because eventually it's gonna you gotta turn these in for cores I mean it saves you another 50 but well I mean exchange price was about 80 bucks so if you didn't turn the core in, it cost you like 150 bucks so we're going to turn the core in, but for right now, that's all we're going to do on that. Need to find another bag, stick it in. save these bags that I get for uh, doing transmissions at the shop and they sure come in handy the GM is no stranger to using plastic and baggage and packing and it cracks you up when you see some of the stuff you get in you like why did they even waste the time on the package?
bag. Let's see if I got another baggie or something I can stick this stuff in. This is perfect. All right, get out of the way. <sighs> On to the separator plate. Now, I just opted to get a new separator plate since, uh, You know, there was enough damage on the old one, or just wear, basically. Uh-oh. Mic down. I haven't even never even seen them come with those little plugs before. Okay, this is okay, that's what I'm saying. If valve body does not have a roll pin here, plug this hole with a slug furnished. Okay, that's what the slugs are for. Slug that hole right there all right so since we do have an auxiliary valve body we got to plug this hole with one of these slugs All right, so I got this slug in right there because it does have the auxiliary valve body. So now we need to look at the uh, at the valve body itself. And they want to know if it's got a roll pin. thing around open it up okay it says if there's a roll pin right there in that hole then you're supposed to put the other slug in Let's see, if the valve body does not have a roll pin here, plug this hole with the slug first. All right, so we gotta plug this other hole. Which is gonna be this one here. So we need to plug that hole too. Okay, the way I'm doing this, guys, I'm just using a big hammer and uh, hammering this slug in there. But I'm going to tell you probably the best way to do this is with a, a press and uh, a good flat surface.
to keep from distorting the the uh, spacer plate is I had to straighten this back out once I stuck that plug in there because I distorted it a little bit. I mean, it's a pretty thick gasket or, or plate. But, uh, yeah, the, probably the best way to do it is in a, in a shop press. So I'll show you how I did it. These are just aluminum slugs, so... And that'll be about do it, and I've got it flat, you know, the plate looks pretty flat, so there we've got the other slug, so that's it for that. If you buy a factory plate, you won't have to do this. All right. And it asks for the second piston casting codes in the 93 or 95-1, which the old 2.4 servo. Let me get back with you on that. All right, guys. So I went in there and I printed this off, which this is a, uh, you can get this right off of Sonic's website. It basically, if you don't have the casting number, since I've got an aftermarket Corvette servo installed and, and I've got another one laying over there, but you need to know the casting number because there's a couple things one of them is on this separator plate by Transgo. It, it asks, um, if your second piston casting code ends with an 093 or 95-1, you're supposed to drill the holes A and C to 110 thousandths. And also, that, uh, This um, release check valve that that I got, it also says in the instructions that if the last three digits on the casting number are 53, 553, 554, or 159, you don't do anything with this valve. But if it's got an 093 or one piece aftermarket, which on a Corvette servo, it would be an 093. So, if that's the case, then you have to take and enlarge this little hole right there to an eighth inch. So, let's go ahead and open this up. So yeah, this little orifice right here, and that valve, you need to open up to an eighth inch. So, get our drills out here. It's not going to take much either. It's pretty close the way it is. put that in the vise. We don't really have to worry about uh, the soft jaws on this one because it doesn't seal against anything really. We just need something way to hold it. Just like that.
All right, so that's done. Put that aside. And on the spacer plate, since we know we've got an 093 valve, this one here. C and they want it 110 thousandths. And they want this one here, which is A, to 110 thousandths. Alright, now let's see what it says for the uh, for the Sonics because we may be doing the same thing. Okay, on the Sonics instructions. That's the same hole if you flip the plate over. They want 110 thousandths here, but Sonic's moderate performance, they want 90 thousandths, which I think we're already there. Um, let's get our caliper out here. See what this one measures. That's 108 thousandths. So let's see what this uh, 330 seconds is here. 330 seconds is okay. That one's 93 thousandths. It won't go through the hole. All right, since they're saying the same thing, they say enlarge the three, four clutch feed hole to match the customer's needs. Regular duty, no plate, no modification to it. Moderate performance, 90 thousandths. TV balance, they want no, no larger than. No larger than a sixteenth of an inch. <clears throat> Which your TV balance is that one right there. We're going to leave that one alone for now. say this one was, was 330 seconds was seventy five ninety roughly ninety three thousandths All right, y'all. So we enlarged we enlarged our our feed hole for our three four clutch to ninety three thousandths. I think we're gonna go ahead and enlarge the uh, the three two exhaust also to ninety three thousandths. Transgo says one hundred and ten thousandths, um, but I'm worried about the shift feel so 
I mean, worst case scenario, we can always pull it out and open it up some more. But we're going to go ahead and just open that hole up just to 93 thousandths, which isn't much. And uh, we're going to call it good. All right. Just like that. Also, make sure you see me do it on the other one. But make sure when you uh, when you drill through that plate to uh, run a small file on the back side of it and knock that burr off of there. That way, you don't chance on don't take a chance on running the burr. Uh, getting some of that to break off in the deal. Just take a flat file and and uh, smooth that dude out. So you can see the file is grabbing on it. Just like that. All right, so we're gonna call that good. They've got the correct separator plate gaskets underneath. And the way I determine that is they're marked, of course, with the yellow stripes. Um, that should be the difference between auxiliary valve body and non-auxiliary valve body. Um, this one has an auxiliary valve body, and as long as you got the ones that got the yellow stripe on it, they're a match set. They're also, if you look in the corner... If you can see that right there, they're marked C and V for case and valve body. So you can't get them mixed up. And if you look on these other ones that they shipped with you, not only that, I guess they do, do on that side. If you look on these in the corner, They've got a like two halves of a C there, and the V is cut out on that one right there. So you know those are a match set. So there you have it, guys. That's the valve body section. I know it wasn't real elaborate, but you, I basically I explained to you what the deal is with why I went the way I did because if you eat sometimes you can spend more time and money in making the valve body you got r correct versus just getting another one uh, getting a reman one and there's several companies besides Sonics I just I've used their equipment I've used their parts and they make excellent parts so that's why I went with them and granted their reman valve bodies are stock reman valve bodies they may use sonics parts in them but they are a stock valve body so in other words if you buy one of the sure cure kits or the power packs or something like the power packs you wouldn't do on the 700 the only one they've got is just the sure cure kit for the 4l60 non-electronic and 700r4 but like on the power packs and stuff like that, they're going to be stock valve bodies. So if you modify them, you have to change the valving that's, that they ship you with the, the uh, shift improver, shift kit, power pack, whatever you want to call it. So that being said, that's going to end it for the valve body section of L to the W700R4. So next uh, next video is... That's going to be the finale. Uh, we're going to put everything together and and uh, get this thing back to them. So y'all stay tuned for it. And uh, I appreciate everybody that stopped in to, to watch these videos in this, this series. So uh, that being said, y'all take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless you and God bless America. We'll see you in the next one, y'all. Bye.